Architects of Funk, an infamous rock and roller, and a couple of the greatest modern rock drummers are among the unforgettable musicians we lost in 2022. Born in 1942, Calvin Simon's journey as a funk godfather started early in his life. In the late 50s, he joined forces with vocalists Fuzzy Haskins and Grady Thomas in George Clinton's R&B group The Parliaments, which eventually merged with Funkadelic to form Parliament Funkadelic. But this wasn't an easy journey, as Simon was struggling with trauma the whole time. As he once said, The thing that means the most to me is how I handled the PTSD from my service in the Vietnam War. As the situation in Parliament Funkadelic grew tense in the late 70s, Simon left the band. He went on to have a prolific solo career as a gospel musician. Before releasing his 2016 album It's Not Too Late, Simon was diagnosed with thyroid cancer. He received treatment and seemed to be doing fine when his wife succumbed to cancer herself. Then on January 6, 2022, Simon died at the age of 79. The cause of death has not been made public. Miami-based rapper Wavy Navy Poo was born Chandler Boobin in 1994. He was sadly all too familiar with gun violence, and his songs were reflections of his own life. During one incident in May 2020, he was shot twice in his legs while driving, and he fired back at the attacker. The rapper was also reportedly involved in several shootings in 2021. Then on January 14, 2022, he was in his car with a woman and two young children. While he was stopped at a light, their car was ambushed, and he was fatally shot. News of Wavy Navy Pooh's untimely death surfaced on the internet before police confirmed his identity. In the front seat, there was a one-year-old child in a car seat that easily could have been struck by gunfire. Meatloaf was born Marvin Lee a day in Dallas, Texas, and he had a pretty rough start in life. He lived on and off with his grandmother while his father's alcoholism took a violent turn. The budding singer purposely gained 60 pounds to escape being drafted, though he still received a notice. That's when he ran off to Los Angeles and got work as a bouncer. Soon enough, he had his own band called Meatloaf Soul, but it was while performing in the musical Hair that he really got his first significant recognition. In 1975, Meatloaf starred in the Rocky Horror Picture Show, a cult film that has spawned a series of raucous midnight screenings. Then, in 1977, he released the iconic hit album Bad Outta Hell, which featured the classic songs Paradise by the Dashboard Light and Two Out of Three Ain't Bad. In November 2021, Meatloaf spoke out about his struggle with back pain and multiple surgeries, revealing on Facebook, I couldn't hit high notes because of back pain. Not a slight back pain, pain that would bring you to your knees. He urged others not to get back surgery themselves, as it had only made things worse for him. Two months later, he died at the age of 74, surrounded by his wife and two daughters. Syl Johnson was part of the groundbreaking wave of black musicians who moved from the South to Chicago in the mid-20th century. He was born in 1936 in Mississippi, and then in 1959 he released his first song. In 1975, he debuted Take Me to the River, which was written by Al Green. Johnson's fame and influence increased from there, as the developing hip-hop scene sampled several of his songs. Johnson is recognized not just for his musicianship, but also for his politically engaged lyrics. For example, his song Is It Because I'm Black contains social commentary from the civil rights era that's still relevant today. On February 6, 2022, Johnson died at the age of 85 his family announcing he lived his life as a singer, musician, and entrepreneur who loved black music, a fiery, fierce fighter, always standing for the pursuit of justice. And Syl Johnson's passing comes less than a week after his brother, Blues Hall of Famer Jimmy Johnson, who died at the age of 93. Rolling Stone remembered Betty Davis as the trailblazing queen of funk as she started recording songs in the genre as early as 1964. During this time, she was a model going by her birth name, Betty Mabry. Four years later, she married jazz trumpeter Miles Davis and took his name. Their marriage ended after just one year, but each left their musical mark on the other. Davis was primarily known for her raw, powerful voice and her openly sexual lyrics, which was quite groundbreaking in the early 70s. Janelle Monet once said of Davis, She's one of the godmothers of redefining how black women in music can be viewed. I respect her a lot, and she's opened up a lot of doors for artists like myself. Davis left the music scene in the 70s, but in 2019 she released A Little Bit Hot Tonight, her first new song in over 40 years. On February 9, 2022, she died of natural causes at the age of 77. Taylor Hawkins joined the Foo Fighters at a time when David Grohl was already an illustrious drummer, and he felt intimidated by Grohl's talent. As he admitted to Rolling Stone in 2021, there's the best drummer in the world again, and I'm the little dumb shit behind him that just does whatever I'm told and tries to play Everlong as good as him, and I can't. But Grohl and Hawkins became very good friends, and Hawkins soon proved his talent and raw power to his bandmates and fans alike. But his last days were sadly much grimmer than that. Hawkins was reportedly increasingly exhausted from Foo Fighters' constant touring. Before a show in Bogota, Colombia on March 25, 2022, emergency responders were called to Hawkins' hotel as he was experiencing chest pain. When the paramedics arrived, he was already dead. 
Several drugs were found in his system, though the cause of death has not been made public. Foo Fighters immediately canceled their tour, and Grohl went on to organize a tribute concert for Hawkins that summer that included musical legends like Paul McCartney and many more. All of these amazing people came here tonight for one reason, to celebrate the life of Taylor Hawkins. Playing the drums in a progressive rock band is no easy feat. Playing the drums for Yes and Two Beatles is even more impressive, but such was the career of Alan White. According to White's official website, he began playing the piano at age six. His uncle, noticing his percussive style, then bought him a drum kit. Then in 1969, when he was about 20 years old, he received a call from John Lennon, who wanted White to play the drums with his Plastic Ono band. White reportedly thought it was a joke, so he hung up, but luckily Lennon called him back. A year later, White played the drums on George Harrison's classic album, All Things Must Pass. Then in 1972, he replaced Yes's original drummer, Bill Bruford. The Yes lineup went through a series of high-profile changes over the years, but White stuck through to the very end, making him the band's longest-serving member. In 2017, he was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame alongside his Yes bandmates. On May 26, 2022, White succumbed to a short illness at the age of 72. The 2022 Yes Tour would have marked his 50th year anniversary with the band. Olivia Newton-John had a prolific career as a singer, songwriter, and actress, but she also had a pretty tragic personal life. She began singing as a teenager and landed her big break in 1973 when she won a Grammy for Best Country Female Vocal Performance for the title track on her third solo album, Let Me Be There. The following year, she received another Grammy, this time for Record of the Year for I Honestly Love You. Newton-John then leapt into movie stardom in the classic 1978 musical Grease. During the early 80s, she remained on the charts with the Xanadu soundtrack and the hit single Physical from the album of the same name. But then in 1992, when she was only 44 years old, she was diagnosed with breast cancer. What followed were decades of treatment, surgeries, and relentless activism. She even built the Olivia Newton-John Cancer and Wellness Center in Melbourne, Australia. In 2017, she spoke to Today after surviving cancer a second time. As she put it, I'm not going to be one of those statistics. I'm going to be fine. I think that you can live with cancer like you can live with other things if you take care of yourself. Alas, a year later, Newton-John was diagnosed with cancer for a third time. On August 8, 2022, she passed away at the age of 73. Every day is a gift now, you know, particularly now. Ramsey Lewis was a world-renowned jazz and pop pianist. He earned his first Grammy in the mid-60s for Best Instrumental Jazz Performance for his Dobie Gray cover, The In Crowd. He went on to have a series of top 10 songs, five gold records, and three Grammys. He was also a huge influence on British musicians, including club DJs and rappers who sampled his tunes. Lewis credited his parents with giving him a very early musical sense. As he once told the Chicago Sun-Times, I lucked out because both my parents loved classical and gospel music. My dad loved jazz as well, so I was hearing this music around the house since I was born. During his career, Lewis released more than 80 albums. In 2007, he was honored as a jazz master by the National Endowment for the Arts. He announced his retirement in 2019, although he kept recording. He passed away on September 12, 2022, at the age of 87. Me and my brother Frame, you know, we, we did travel with dad a lot. He was still dad. We'd still go and get hamburgers, sound check. Coolio became a prominent figure of the West Coast rap scene in the late 80s, although he was initially overshadowed by his LA neighbors Dr. Dre, Eazy E, and Ice Cube of NWA. But then in 1995, he achieved worldwide fame with Gangsta's Paradise, which he wrote for the film Dangerous Minds. His first two albums sold millions of copies, and when his musical career cooled down, he turned his eyes toward reality TV and movies. He was also known for being kind and even heroic, as he was once a volunteer firefighter in San Jose. In September 2022, Coolio was found unconscious on the bathroom floor of a friend's house. Paramedics pronounced him dead at the scene, possibly a result of cardiac arrest. He was 59 years old. Several friends and collaborators remembered him fondly, with Dangerous Mind star Michelle Pfeiffer writing on Instagram, I am heartbroken to hear of the passing of the gifted artist Coolio, a life cut entirely too short. Mark Lanigan lived quite the tumultuous life. He had a crippling alcohol addiction when he was only 12, which he attempted to curb with heroin. Then in 1984, the same year that he co-founded the grunge band Screaming Trees, he was hit by a tractor. Screaming Trees released eight studio albums, but split up in 2000 after several conflicts within the band. Lanigan then became a vocalist for Queens of the Stone Age alongside frontman Josh Homme. He left that band after a few years and went on to have an admirable solo career. During the final years of his life, he also became a published author of poetry collections and two memoirs. Lanigan's 2021 memoir, Devil in a Coma, describes his last few months, during which his health was seriously 
seriously affected by COVID-19. The virus made him lose his hearing and then his ability to walk. He also spent time in and out of comas. He was 57 on February 22, 2022 when he succumbed to the illness. Jerry Lee Lewis was quite the controversial character. On the one hand, he was part of the golden rock and roll generation. On the other hand, he was a notorious addict and womanizer. He also quite infamously married his 13-year-old cousin Myra Gale Brown when he was 22. This was outrageous even for the norms of the 1950s, and it seriously hindered Lewis's ascension in the music world. At the age of 14, Brown became a mother, and at 17, she lost her child. Brown has commented that Lewis was in fact the child in the marriage, as she reportedly once said, When I look back on it, how can you defend yourself when you're 13 years old? I mean, there's no excuse good enough for that to be okay. Over the course of his life, Lewis married seven times, accidentally shot a fellow musician, and once crashed his car into Elvis Presley's gates. He was 87 years old when he died on October 28, 2022. If you or anyone you know is struggling with addiction issues, help is available. Visit the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration website or contact SAMHSA's National Helpline at 1-800-662-HELP-4357.